Every now and then we come across a loose socket or have a difficulty fitting one because of a broken back box screw lug. Replacing the back box itself is the obvious answer and sometimes the only answer, but this usually ends up with damaging the wall and will require repairing it and decorating afterwards. There are several ways to fix the issue without having to remove the back box itself. Stay tuned to find out which one works best. So here I have five different options for various different ways of getting you out of the issues that invariably we all come across with the back box repairing. I have a three and a half millimeter re-threading tool for all those times where the lugs themselves are just full of plasterous filler or it's just gone off key very slightly so you just have to put a little bit of a re-thread in it to get your screw nut back in. I've got some items which I've just randomly bought off of the internet. Um, I couldn't tell you what these are called. Uh, it's a Chinese uh, manufactured thing. We'll get into that in a second. A second type, it's kind of a, looks like a principle of it compresses so it jams against the back box. Something called a back box saver kit. Now these are quite readily available at most decent electrical stores. Similarly with the back box repair kit. Now if you've seen this video, you should know all about these. So let's dive into this. You just had your walls re-plastered. Muck invariably always gets in the back boxes. As you can see here, I've just I've just chucked some filler in just to simulate that. Um, so what you have to obviously do, you've got to scrape what you can out of the way um, before getting it in there. But invariably, you see, it just doesn't want to really come out too easily. And even when you do get that out, there's going to be gunk all in the thread, and you don't really want that over the screw. So by taking your re-threading tool, quite literally just put it in the hole and screw it in just to clean all that rubbish out, which then allows you just to put your, your screw back in. And just to show you how that really works, I cut myself some little pieces of perspex for the purposes of the camera so you can see what's going on. And you can see that just simply just winds straight in, no problem whatsoever. So, moving on to the next one. Now, I've never never used these before. I haven't even taken them out of the packet, as you can see. So, you end up with a set of what looks like to be a compression-style system with both ends which rotate so that you can make sure you line your hole up in the correct place. A right angled spanner and some screws. Now I'm just going to check that because that actually looks a little bit too big. That is too big for a standard lug. So straight away that to me feels like that's an M4 screw which is obviously too big for the standard UK back boxes which are three and a half. But just to experiment, let's just just have a look and see how these work. Now I can already see that there's going to be an issue because you've got to get that hole lined up smack bang in the middle. And I can already tell that this is going to be quite the fiddly job. So I'm already not liking these too much. And in fact, one thing I have just noticed on here is that the hole's bigger on one side than it is on the other. So you've got to make sure you get these the right way around because the thread is only on one side. So we'll just put that back in again. We'll take the spanner. Now this isn't the easiest of jobs, I have to admit, because I could, that's still spinning, even though I'm getting that in there quite tight. It might be better with a plastic back box, but if you've got a plastic back box, you just rip the clip out and you buy another back box and you just replace it with that, so you've taken the back box out. So let's just see how well this works. 
nice and deep where it does go in but as you can see these screws are massively long so in a lot of cases especially with a 25 mil back box like I have here you're going to have to trim them back and when you trim them back you're going to get burring you're going to get pinching so that might also infringe on when you're trying to thread it into the um, fixture itself but it's not too bad an idea but I mean as you can see this that there is movement in there obviously when you got the other side screwed in that will stop that and if I just give it a tug just see how strong it is yeah that's that's not coming out it's, it's in there good and proper so on to the next one. Again, I've not actually opened any of these. Comes with a little instruction booklet, all in Chinese. But you can see the principle on there. You thread it behind the accessory and it's supposed to expand a lock in into the back box. So these come with wood screws. So it's an interesting concept and again they are massively long so again you'd have to cut them down to make them fit but then you'd probably need the point to make sure that when it goes in it will still bite and the principle works that as you screw it up it goes in and it closes it up but you, obviously you're going to need the space in the back of the back box for these to actually work but there's one thing that I've just thought of looking at the size of this as to whether they will actually work because when you squash it down that's how it's supposed to work and then it squash it down and then it locks in either side of the back box if I just hold that flat it's far too small far too small for standard UK back box so there's no point in even trying that because straight away that's a useless item and it's not going to help anybody the back box saver kit now I've never used these so I'm really interested in seeing how these work the instruction book I try not to let the bits fall through the holes in the in the table where you can see they've given you a a screw, first little bits of kit, and it looks like this one here has the nut in it. Now these are great for or design so that if the lug hole has been completely stripped out, it's too big, the idea is to quite literally slip the lug over the existing lug so you can screw straight into it without having to mess around too much and there's obviously different sizes for the Actually, I don't know why they've they put these in here but that would simply go over the hole now, maybe to give you a little bit a little bit of movement but the hole is where the hole is so I don't really know what those are for but anyway this little nut here, because of the little band, that will just slide straight over the existing nut. Just like that, holds quite firmly in place. It's not really gonna go too far. Obviously make sure it's all lined up. And then taking the screw that it comes with, my makeshift accessory, straight in there and that's going to hold it in place however you do have to make sure it is bang on because I've just noticed it has pushed it off to the side very slightly and it's not actually threading into the unit it's only running through the existing thread on the back box there so that itself is going to be a little bit fiddly I 
I suppose the disadvantage I have here is that I didn't actually have the full thought of actually drilling out a hole to make that slip so that lines up. But it's still, if he doesn't drop it, still a very, very good idea. And I can see how this can get you out of trouble in a lot of different ways. So I'd really like that, that that's a good idea. In principle, it's just down to my own bad pre-management. I'm not actually pre-drilling the hole out to give it the proper demonstration. Now, the last one I've got is the back box repair clip. Now, these are really great. For example, say the lug's fallen out, or it's rusted, or it's been bent over, and no matter what you do, even if you've managed to save this, the little pins on the side might have snapped off or they're just so loose that every time you put it in there, it'll just fall out. So the back box clip, invariably, allows you to move it so you can position it like you would normally. Um, it gives you that little bit of um, movement so you can make sure your accessory goes in straight and level. And there's just a little clip on the back which literally just clips into the box. So what you need to do here is you just need to flatten those pins off or if, for example if this was all the way bent back I'll try it on both sides to give you an example of both and it quite literally just goes over the edge Make sure you get it as into the middle as much as you possibly can. And then you just have to knock it into place. This has still got that little bit of movement. It's not completely square in the box because obviously the original lugs in the back there have pushed it out a little bit. And again, if on this side where it's slightly bent, we'll do the same thing. Now, the one thing with these ones, because I've used these in the past, is that sometimes the back box is so close to the wall, this filler all the way around the edge here. So you might have to take a, a, a small knife or take your screwdriver in and just scrape a little bit of that wall out of the way first to allow the clip to go in. But it's not an issue because the accessory will always hide that damage that you do to it. So taking the cover again, we can just see just how simple that is, and that's gone straight in there without any problems whatsoever. And even with it being bent very slightly, it doesn't really matter too much because back box is invariably fairly flexible, so you, it will always pull into a level positioning. If I take that out of there, try it on the other side. Again, very similar thing going on there. So there we have it. There are five very easy, simple ways of getting you out of trouble. And there's one last option, which I haven't shown you here, that we can use. It's a bit of a bodge, but it does work. Especially if your accessory has the little plastic screw covers on the faceplate, so you will never see it anyway. And that answer is to just simply get a three and a half millimeter wood screw. And it will just go straight in to any of the lugs and it will grip it, hold the accessory in place, nice and firm. But like I said, it is a bit of a bodge. Uh, you have to make sure you get the right length wood screw so it doesn't infringe on the back box itself. And you also have to make sure that the screw itself has a small enough head that it will actually fit within the accessory. So things like MKs, for example, it wouldn't work for because the screws are on show, but things like Hager, um, accessories like Hager, where they do have the little plastic lugs, something like this will get you out of trouble very quick, very easily, and more importantly, very cheaply. So just to demonstrate very quickly with the wood screw, as you can see, it'll just slide straight in, the head's small enough to fit within the hole itself and there's plenty of space in there in which to get the plastic cover on it. Moving over to this one which I showed you a minute ago it's got a four millimeter screw in it but you also see it's got a dome head on it. 
So when you put that in, although it does fit in this one, I know in a lot of sockets, it won't actually fit, but it's almost flush with the face. So you're not gonna be able to get your plastic covering. And also being that it's a different size and shape, it's gonna look odd to your usual screw on the other side. And of course, if you want to use both lugs, then you simply can't use it. Well, there we have it. They each have their own pros and cons, but personally, well, I don't have a favorite because they all have the different applications for the different uses. Please let me know your experiences in the comments below and if this video has helped you. Let me know which one you would use and which one you prefer. Thank you very much for watching. Please give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out on future videos. Until next time, bye for now. Well, there's only one place to put these ones really.